Hello, this is Brian Witten and AT Art. Um, I wish you all a Merry Christmas. For those of you who have gone around on Earth, it's been a little bit quicker than the rest of you. Happy Boxing Day. Um, for those of you who are 12 or younger, I would appreciate if you'll go and get your parents to watch this video or your carers. And if they say it's okay, it's fine with me. For everybody else, uh, welcome back to the channel. I do appreciate uh, the increase in subscribers and the sharing and whatnot. Um, I thought I'd put this video up today because there was something that happened. If we look at the inserted picture here of these white lines. They were actually drawn on a rock in the middle of me making a video called a programmable rock. It's a very odd thing, but I wanted to start this video in the following fashion. You've heard that string on my guitar play. I walked through this lounge room not so long ago, within a month, and obviously it was 3 a.m. in the morning, there was nobody in the lounge room. I went into my bedroom, which is just off to that side, I lied down in my bed, only to hear that guitar do that as soon as I got into bed. And it was that loud, and I thought, well, I just walked through the lounge room and there was nobody in there. <laughs> the both front and back door are locked. Um, I suppose that might frighten some people. To me, it didn't. I've had, like I said, the white lines on that rock appear in the middle of making a video. So, to me, I thought, I haven't finished. There's still something else I need to cover or that they want me to cover. So, I, and I say they, I know that might sound crazy to you guys. I really don't care. I'm here to do a job. I wanted to start with this picture today, mostly because I've shown other people images off rocks and they've just been absolutely blown away as to the fact that it's actually there, that it's real. I wanted to start with this one today because once again we see a little stick figure here pointing over this way to come over here and have a look. And uh, when you do come over here and have a look and shine the light from this side, this is the only picture I have at this present point. But you get down to this side here, and this is what it's wanting me to have a look at. In other words, how the rocks are scattered <laughs> around the world <laughs> by this bloke sitting in this machine here, driving along, dropping them out. <laughs> uh, how the rocks are delivered is actually written on rock. And I thought I'd just let you see that because I've had that for some time and I have actually put it up in videos before or oh, I actually put had put that up on a Facebook or my Facebook account or some time back and said look at this it's amazing but I thought I'd just start with that today that you can see that um, this in actual fact is a little character sitting in here um, driving along on his UFO and this one I get this in another angle this is not the ground it's actually a mothership it looks like with big lasers coming out the front here but I haven't actually got that picture immediately at hand it also does not contain the image of this person here, which is why I wanted to put this picture up, was that you can see that once again, and I've made other videos about this, this pointing. Uh, it doesn't necessarily be like that. It can be, I've had a guy pointing a gun and gone over to see what it was they'd want to see, or an eye. There are many ways that you are told, go and look over there, you know. Um, they are... Most of the rocks have symbols on them. Once you identify what they mean, I've put that up in other um, other videos before. But basically, I wanted to start with that today, and I wanted to start with the guitar ring because I understood what it meant, or at least my perception of what it meant. And what is noise? Noise is frequency. And I was at that point talking about Nibiru's path through the solar system, our solar system. And that was when that guitar string struck like that. I thought, well, maybe they're wanting me to think of frequency. So that is what we're going to discuss today. Before I move on any further with the frequency of Nibiru and its path through the solar system, I wanted to very quickly cover the cycles of Earth as we are shown in the megaliths and a multitude of artifacts. This is one that is very important. And it is to do with our situation um, we see here 
uh, inner ring of rotation of Earth and the outer ring of rotation. This outer ring is 40 million miles out beyond Mars and Earth is out here. There's no human life living on it, okay? That's what's going down here. Um, the cycles of Earth around the Sun here, when we come back in from the outer ring, these, I will zoom in again here just a little bit to show you that these symbols you see here are respecting or, or reflecting, I should say, the Earth's rotation on its axis. So in other words, it's either turning clockwise or anti-clockwise and the shift in movement between one and the other is done when it's moved back in from the outer ring of rotation. It is laid flat in this cycle, so it's 6,000 years both in and out. The 6,000 years in, 2,000 years of it is laid down on the plane. This is reflective of the plane of the sun, this plate the horizontal plane, the one we're looking at, and it's turning at the moment anti-clockwise. When we come up and strike this, the planet goes very, very quickly straight, accelerates in speed and rotation, accelerates its movement through space, and basically goes upwards about the, the whole height of the planet, and we're all dead within the minutes of the 34 or 33 minutes it takes. This movement in here, the Earth is laid flat, it's spun around like that, and when it's stood up, the spinning around and standing up is how it changes its direction on its axis, which is actually stood up when it gets to the inner ring. I don't want to go too much on that, but to say that what we're actually seeing when we see this one, this plate is telling us that the moon cycle changes. I will just move that in so you can see all the text that's written there. This is the moon cycle itself, the moon's going in and out in line with Earth when it goes around here. So 6,000 years ago, Earth was going around the Sun in that direction. This cycle was invoked, which is only 180 degree it moves, where the plane of rotation of Earth moves, the result being that it comes back up, traveling around in an anti-clockwise direction. It goes that way for 16,000 years, and then that 6,000 year cycle is the cycle that we have just finished with the moon in tow, which is why it's 6,000 years. It's off the horizontal plane of the sun here, at least the narrow portions. I'm not saying that the, this plane of the sun that we see flat here is all flat. I've already gone through that process. It's more like an orange peel, larger orange peels over another orange peel over another orange peel, if you can imagine that. And I'm not saying the Earth's rotation is not affected by it, I'm saying the very narrow portions of it, our Earth is not affected by it because the skew of the magnetic plane of Earth against that of the Sun, this horizontal plane, is what stops those violent actions all the way through that 6,000 year cycle. That is what we're told. When the Earth stood back up straight here again, travelling around anti-clockwise, the Moon is moved in and out in sync with Earth. It doesn't rotate around the Earth anymore. It moved away and it goes in and out between this, driven by the inner planets of Mercury and Venus. I wanted to let you know that that's actually what happens. We've discussed that to this point. I just wanted you to know that when we see this happen, it does this and then it goes back out to the outer ring, that whole cycle to go out and come back to the change of direction is 44,000 years or 48,000 years and there is another 65,000 year cycle. I will show you that very shortly. I will show you this parchment I have shown you before, though I've made it a little bit less clear. Um, Anadno Nazar is the person and responsible for this, and there's a youth community mob I've looked up here um, who this was that actually prepared this parchment. Look on a non profit uh, situation here. I don't to seek money or, or anything, but uh, certainly with the importance was to understand why all this was here and to let mankind know. Um, and probably he and whoever else was involved in preparing such a document. It's not the first time it was done. There's also another English version done by an English explorer in the early 1900s, so it's not the first thing. It's, it's certainly not the only one. It's certainly the one that's most clear for me to show you I believe what we're seeing up here is the cycles of Earth, the ones that I just told you about, the 44,000 is 4 times 11, 44, 44, 44, 44, 48, 48, and that one there is 5 by 13, which is 65. I think we're looking at here a complete solar cycle, so in other words, 
all of the cycles put together to start from here, in other words, from the very beginning of the sequence to the end of the sequence being 339,000 years. And we've gone through that process. If we count across here, we've got 22 on each row here, which is telling us that it's a 44 or 88,000 year cycle to do the whole lot. Okay? And you'd say, okay, well, that doesn't quite work out because we've got, well, I just said we've got 16,000 years in one, one direction, 16,000 years in the other, and we've got two sixes to add to that, and that is our 44,000 years, um, if I am correct. Okay, so 16, 16, 32, 32, and 12 is 44. Okay, so that's where we're getting our 44,000 year cycle. And uh, so that's the inner 44 the out of 44, and then you'll note the only bloke on this whole parchment bar these that's looking this way is this guy here. He's changed direction and that's why I said to you and I wanted to show you on that plate that the change of direction is when you were coming back in from the outer ring of rotation having achieved the 44,000 year portion of this cycle on the outer ring. And albeit it shows you people here, there are no humans on earth when it's out in the outer ring. It is without doubt. I'll show you where we see that. We see that here when we see on this, this is a cave painting. I'll be honest with you, I do not even know where this is, but uh, I'm saying that what I expect this is here is the beginning of that cycle back in from the outer ring of rotation. Once we get beyond or just level with where Mars is or close to it, um, is when we see the last 4,000 years of that 6,000 year cycle. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6,000 years. And here we see the Egyptians getting put on here. The Asian people are getting on sooner. Why are they getting on sooner? Because the moon is in a fixed orbit. It's not going around the earth here. It's going around the sun still, left as it was in the cycle that I just showed you, which is what we're approaching. A 16,000 year with the earth standing straight going anti-clockwise and the moon cycling the sun moving in and out towards earth and the only time that ovulation of the women that are on the planet happen is when the moon is at its closest and this is how we work that out. We know that there are races of people incapable of even breeding on earth at all when it goes around anti-clockwise. We've also discussed that. I didn't want to go back over too much of that today I just wanted to let you know that this is where we're getting told that's that type of problem. That the Asians are represented by this uh, little cart, the Egyptians by the mummy. And notice how the South Americans, which are with the llama, it's not until it's stood up, but it's going clockwise around the sun, the earth here. That's why you're getting told this. The South Americans don't have a problem going clockwise around the sun. But they have a problem when it goes anti-clockwise and they are, like the Caucasian races, having a problem with this new cycle that's about to start when it does. Um, I won't go into dates. <laughs> i tried that a thousand times. Uh, all I can say is I'm not a mason. I have never been to a secret society. The things that I have come to understand have been driven by what's been left here for me to understand. Once I kicked off with this, once again I'll insert Wilson's Rock. It was understanding what that actually meant led me to the pyramids and led me all the way down this path of discovery. So I just keep going on and I can tell you now, I started with a microscopic image of the rock because that is being absolutely, once I realised that was there and the technologies required to put it there, I can assure you it was, I work in a field of electronics and uh, my basis was you know, microfiche readers and folk photography and all such things like that. So in actual fact, I understood the technologies I was seeing within those river rocks. And the imagery, you know, and how to put it there was far surpassed the technology we see even in the temples, and they are amazing. But nonetheless, this is why I wanted to show you here. So I just wanted to show you that because to, you need to understand that when we talk about the frequency of Nibiru through the system. To come back to then the frequency of Nibiru through the system, I wanted to come here first of all because I believe that what we're seeing in this crop circle left us here, this is in England, that it's telling us what's going to happen for the next 16,000 years once Earth's axis is stood up straight. So in other words, that Nibiru's path or movement through the 
system takes an outer planet. So we're talking about Mercury, Venus, um, Earth, or will be the Moon, will eventually be this other ring here that will move in and out here, um, Earth and Mars. Now you can note that there's bigger, and I've got Mars written here, but these circles are bigger. But what we're seeing here is with the removal of mass from the outer planet here for the next 16,000 years, the addition of mass by other planets being put back within the inner solar system, more than likely, to be honest, they're that smarter. They appear to me to be able to build planets and they'll draw plasma from the sun to do it. And that's an actual fact what they're going to do. So we'll see the 16,000 years and why I said to you I wanted to show you the 44,000 year cycle. Um, you know, it's in, in, in its entirety. That if we see it as an 88,000 year, the 44,000 years, there's going to be one, one quarter of the plane shifting around. So in other words, the sun's plane itself begins to drift. The one that I've just shown you on the plate, it starts to drift this way, around in an anti-clockwise direction itself, so that it, it shifts this far. The plane itself of the sun shifts and that that's being driven by this. And why? Because it's steering Nibiru to the other stars. That's why. It's got to steer it back and forward to different stars. So when we see this happen here, we are getting Jupiter taken away here. I'll move this in a bit closer so you can see it a little bit more clearly. This corner up here. So in the next 16,000 years, we count the planets that have moved. We lose Jupiter here. We lose Saturn there. We lose Uranus there. And from that point, we don't lose any more planets. They've still got this one here. So we've had three passes of Nibiru within the 16,000 years. I still believe the next one, I thought it was going to be, well, I thought it was going to be pretty soon. But then we've got calendars that have been modified by popes, modified by queens. I think it was the pope, actually, changed it to the Gregorian one. In actual fact, the 24th of December, as I've shown you on a parchment previously, the 24th is that's actually today's date is the 13th. It would have been the 13th had there, you know, it depends on what calendar you're looking at. So anyway, I, I'm not going to even bother with dates anymore because I'm going to stick with the process because in actual fact I believe that's the case, which is why we have so much turmoil on the planet at the moment. So I'm not supposed to know any of this. I'm not a mason and I'm not one of the secret society or nor a member of the elite. Um, so that's what we're seeing. We're seeing three planets here moved within that period of time, which is 3,700 years. It's only half of the time. But also we are seeing the build-up of more mass. The moon is going to be moving in and out closer here, which is probably why we're seeing three here, that the moon is going in and out between the closest and back to being you know, the closest to Earth and the furthest from Earth, which is why we're seeing this here. But here we're actually seeing the build-up of more planets and that this in turn with the outer, the outer removal of mass in the outer is in actual fact what's going to drift that plane. I could be wrong but I would expect that that's probably what we're going to see happen and we're going to have in the Christian Bible we talk of, and I'm not a per church guy, I haven't gone to church since I left school, um, but I'm well aware we went twice a week so I'm well aware of what the teachings were that God made heavens and earth in seven days be honest with you, they work very, very quickly. I would expect that um, we're not going to wait too long for this to happen. And I certainly expect the whole process here is one of the lesson in astrophysics history. Remember, the, I showed you this, I've meant and neglected in my last video, this column or shiny pillar, if you will, that was left in Utah. I forgot to put in that video that this is directly above it. Look at it. It's a, a hominoid and his dog. Look at the shape of the hominoid's face. Now look at this image. It's the Sphinx in Egypt before it was modified or renovated. Um, <laughs> renovated to hide the truth. Modified to hide the truth. Look at the left side of the Sphinx. It is the same hominoid. It is our history. We have been on Earth for millions and millions of years. Well, I say Earth, it's not Earth. 
we have been around for millions and millions and millions of years, which is why I wanted to discuss with you the frequency of Nibiru. So I wanted to say to you there that we're seeing three passes of Nibiru, but no more. Also wanted to make note that if we watch here, Mercury, Mercury is taken out here. You see the path of it, it's actually brought back out to here. So Mercury is moved here. We know Mercury is supposed to be driving, help driving the Moon through these three phases that can go through, or three distances it travels to get to the Earth at its closest and furthest away. But once it's gone, that drive, ability to drive with Mercury and Venus is no longer there. Why? Because Earth has gone. It's gone pushed out beyond, beyond Mars now, out to a ring of rotation out here. 40 million miles beyond Mars. So therefore it's no longer needed. It is left and locked into a plane here, right where it's shown, beyond Mars, out here, and between Mars and Jupiter is where it's going to lock in here, will be where the Moon is left. And it is left there so that when Earth is pushed back in, as we've just shown you on the wall in the cave painting, the ability to place people on as Earth is coming back in, that the, the um, Mercury is left there in sync instead of the Moon possibly. This is also a possibility, but certainly Mercury is driven out here. It would appear to me to be the case there, if you follow the path of that, it's moved out and it's moved out at the end of the 16,000 year cycle. So, uh, like I said, with it gone, maybe the Moon is left in here in a fixed plane, but it uses Mercury as a Moon, because it doesn't necessarily have to be the Moon, it just has to be something of similar size or that can act as a Moon um, when the planet Earth has moved back in here. So I just wanted to let you know that that's the case. Or oh, it could be that Mercury becomes the Moon of Earth and they switch or interchange. I do not know, but all I'm saying is it is obviously there. It seems obvious to me that Mercury is being moved out. But most importantly, I wanted you to see that we are seeing three planets removed from there and the reason was frequency of Nibiru through the stars. Now I did want to come back to this crop circle because it's very important and I did put this up in a video and I'm, I put this up on YouTube as well thinking that we were on the we could work out the speed of Nibiru because every star that we had three star signs eight light years away or three stars and these were other planets but in actual fact I think that's actually incorrect I think what we're looking at here is star systems yes um, we have got two of the three, I'll show you the three stars now, Th all three are roughly about eight light years away from Earth. I've just shown you in the last crop circle, three visits, we only lose three planets from the outer solar system, Jupiter, Saturn and Uranus. So if in actual fact we were star A here, and Earth, Earth is going to, or the solar system is going to be visited by Nibiru. So here's its first visit, then it goes away, goes out to that star, then it comes back again. That's its second visit, then it goes out to that star, and then it comes back, and then it's its third visit, and then it goes back to the star that it came from. So in actual fact, we are seeing three visits, but we would have to be star A, or the planet in star A here. So that would be our star system here. And then we wouldn't see it because then it's going to go and do the very same thing as it's doing in A, in B, and then in C. And that's why I'm saying to you that what we're seeing here, once we get past this 6,000 year cycle that has sorted us a lot out and said, listen, it's not right. The reason why this, this whole system is run like this is because there's people on our planet now in our cycle they think chopping up a baby and eating it is fair game. My God, I'm not kidding. And it's protected by the very top people of our world. This is the thing that you're going to, we're all going to really, really be somewhat heartbroken that you've put so much allegiance in people that are filth to a degree you will not believe. And a greater many of them have been misled as well. And a greater many of them have been brought into it since they were little children. It's a pretty hard thing to acknowledge, but how 
a child can or a person can grow up when they grow up and they see little babies chopped up in front of them from the time they're eight years old you know you can understand it so like I said I'm not here to judge anybody but uh, the people coming here are and I would expect the whole process here of me doing all these videos for the better part of nearly two years now was in actual fact to give the leaders of our world a chance to tell you everything we've learnt in them and their delivery address from this process was going to be assessed that's how it's going to be assessed so like I said I'll get back to the diagram here and that's what we're seeing we are seeing three passes here the removal of three outer planets and then we're seeing off to the other star system why? because the cycle we have just finished is going to start there right when Nibiru gets back here again it's going to be exactly the same thing and it's going to go around like this. The reason I wanted to bring this up is because we have two star systems that are close to us within eight light years that are binary star systems. I'll be honest with you, I think they're those two. And this one here will be the non-binary star system just like our own. What I think we're seeing here, I, the irony is we're getting told about a virus, coronavirus or COVID or whatever it is being used as a means of communicate for these people I expect it's a complete load of hogwash we all know that but in reality here what we're seeing here is the manifestation of what we would have done if you stop and think about what we would do ourselves if we thought our own earth was threatened what would you do but you can't go out and go and just roll into any star system if this behavior driven by the way we see here is what happens. So I would think that albeit our star is currently A or B or C within that that structure that eventually once the 339 year thousand year cycle that I showed you on that parchment is there and the 65,000 year end cycle 65,000 year cycle is going to be when Earth does not no longer spin in this solar system but it spins around the solar system and that star which is a binary star system so in other words it's putting us back as we once were many 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 millions of years ago and this whole process of cleansing through the star systems like this is also moving our way inching our way out through the galaxies our galaxy and spreading star after star after star filtering that behavior out of all of us and however it manifested itself I doubt very much that it manifested itself by our adventures into another star system I truly don't believe that because to have actually achieved that we would have been well aware of our own physiology having gone to just other, solar, uh, other planets within our own solar system our own physiology of ourselves and each different peoples on each different planet would have been well known so I still think that it's something that was pretty good and we didn't have the problem but it's been it's been a, a an event a galactic event that corrupted human genome and from that point this process was put into place by our ancestors and it's existed for millions and millions of years and human life exist on many many stars that is what I wanted to show you today and I think that was pretty uh, important thing to know that uh, if you stop and think about it if we ever felt endangered ourselves and we were smart enough to do it that's exactly what we would do and we were got you know our ancestors got smart enough to roll our planet out bring it back beyond Mars and build mats from the stars whether it was us originally I'm seeing that it probably is that it's been millions and millions and millions of years of evolution we had light speed you know 65 million years ago we were already transcending between stars that long ago so really if you stop and think about the technology and what we've achieved in only the last 40 to 50 years imagine millions and millions of years of those skills it's unbelievable what we would have achieved and and what appear we have achieved so that's what I would think um, and I've also said to you that if in actual fact the earth is going to stand up straight 
the delivery of people off our solar system here in our star, our sun in this one, will be what's happened in the last 18 months and our leaders will be delivered to one place or another based on what you have and haven't done. And be quite frank, I don't think any of you have done anything but cover your asses. At least try to. You do not cover your asses from these people. I think that finishes what I wanted to do today and I didn't want to make the video very long so um, listen I'll say to you all Happy New Year and uh, I hope you've had a very Merry Christmas. I had a very quiet one myself. I was here doing what I'm doing now. <laughs> Talking to myself. <laughs> uh, no, I was it. Um, listen, I had a very, very quiet Christmas. I was here on my own and did not have uh, any family with me this year, so that was just unfortunate, but I will catch up with one of my boys this afternoon. Um, I bid you all a fond farewell, and uh, this will definitely be the last of my videos on YouTube um, and ETR. I had pondered what I was going to do, but I'm certain my job is done here, and I have no more I can add after this. I think working out what we've worked out to this point, both the Earth's cycles of Earth, the cycles of Moon, and the cycles sideways, the cycles backwards, frontwards, upwards. We've gone through birth rates, we've gone through extended gestation periods for some women. We've gone through the inability of the Caucasian races to breed at all with this new cycle of the Moon. The South Americans, once again, they can go pretty good going around the sun in a clockwise direction. Anti-clockwise it isn't because the women do not um, have, a, have a problem with uh, producing an egg when the moon is close enough, it's just the fetus does not grow at all very well and they have still births. That's what's been there uh, showing us. I think I'll leave it there today. Most of us have changes one way or another. I've seen Pacific Islanders uh, and the, the Maori people and people in the Pacific Island are going to have babies and be able to produce their fetus is very, very, um, very, very, goes very, very well in this new cycle. And they seem to be able to give birth in less than four months to a healthy child. Whereas others, that extends out to nearly two years. So this is what I'm saying. We've got a lot to learn. I think that'll finish off us. And once again, I'll make note of where that uh, is from the UK crop circles, that uh, crop circle. I, um, I guess I don't ask their permission, but I certainly do relay to them what these mean, which is, um, I think, a pretty much par for par transition. And I mentioned who they are when we put them up here. So like I said, I haven't set out here to make any income, nor was it ever for that purpose. That was uh, the truth, we all should have been getting told in uh, our history lessons at school and universities and imagine what man would have achieved in just the last 50 years if we had, or 100 years, if this not had been hidden to us from the European royals. We can bet your life they even know all this too. There is very, very, very few things that if any I've discovered other than uncovering secrets. And that is uh, all from Brian Wooten and ETR today. Have a nice day. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.